Hey guys, Zero here with a Path of Exile video. So what's it going to be about? Well, of course, Discharge Build. Yes, yes, I'm jumping on the bandwagon, but I'm giving you something that, to my knowledge, no other video does. How to level a Discharge Build from the ground up. Alright, let's get to it. Generally, most guides tell you to pick a leveling build, like Freeze Pulse, and then change over to your end game build somewhere around level 60 to 70. This is actually a really good strategy, but I thought you were here to blow shit up, so we won't be doing that. What we'll be doing is the stupid but oh so fun thing of using Discharge right from the get-go. To be able to do this, we need a few things first, mainly the Searing Touch Staff. This is the staple of the build, so don't even get your character started before you have this really. The good thing is you don't need a perfect staff, and all you need is really a 4 link. On top of that, you can start without any of the unique items that you will probably need later on around endgame. Check out the description for a list of those items. I will also assume that you did your homework and got most if not all of the gems needed for the build. Again, check the description for them. Lastly, a disclaimer. I spec the build exactly like Crypt's end game build. I make no concession for nodes that will be later dropped. This means that you will be low on life, energy shield, and initially also armor. You will probably die a whole lot. If you play on hardcore, I do suggest that you stray enough to pick up some life nodes. This will mean you reach the transition to CI at a later level, probably high 80s instead of mid 70s. Alright, you're level 1. Now what? Get Freezing Pulse. This is your main DPS skill until level 13. You'll also want Fireball and Firestorm, and start leveling those immediately. At level 13, you will be able to equip the Searing Touch. Give it your Fireball and the Firestorm, as it will gain 2 extra levels. This is what your tree should look like at this level. At level 19, you will get Discharge and all of its 3 supporting gems. Make sure you have a 4 link staff, which is 3 red and 1 blue. Fit it with Discharge, Chance to Ignite, Elemental Proliferation, and Fire Penetration. You will also need Warlord's Mark, Enduring Cry times 2 and Flame Ability. Naturally, these can go anywhere you want. At this level, you'll also get LMP, that is, Lesser Multiple Projectiles. Link this with either Freeze Pulse or Fireball, whichever you like best. This ranged ability will allow you to dispatch smaller groups that are unworthy of your discharge. Here's a look at the build thus far. The strategy is to build charges with Enduring Cry once or twice, depending on need and then curse either Warlord's Mark for the big packs, or Flame Ability for rares and bosses. Remember that the burn can do as much if not more damage than the explosion, it just takes a while. This is especially important because Warlord's Mark is very expensive to cast at this level, and the area of effect is tiny, therefore you'll have to figure out what works for you with your mana levels. This is also why at level 31, we will pair it with increased area of effect to actually make it useful. While leveling, you will want to go straight for Iron Reflexes and Unwavering Stance. The issue is that they are at the bottom of the skill map, and getting there will take a while. Yet they are key for the build, and you will have trouble surviving until you get them, especially Unwavering Stance, as you will find that your discharge is being frequently interrupted. Do not take Vault back now. Even if you're lucky enough to have a 5 link staff with Life Leech, you will not get much life back just because of the low level of the gem. Vault Pact, Chaos Inoculation, and Ghost Reaver will be taken only once you have enough energy shield, around 3 to 4,000, and probably around level 75. This is what the build will look like around level 50. From there, get the armor and ES nodes to the left of the Templar starting point. 
then proceed towards CI. This is what the build should look like around level 75. From here, just complete the build as you see fit, naturally taking the last three keystones and ending in something similar to this. Once you go CI, you will be able to use Blood Rage at no detriment. This will fuel your frenzy charges, which will drastically reduce your downtime as you won't have to use Enduring Cry as much. As far as the Act 2 Bandit quest goes, Normal and Cruel you will want to help Alira for 40 mana and 4% faster casting. In Merciless though, you will want to help Oak for the Enduring Charge. Naturally there will be many different variants of the spec, and there are probably quite some improvements to be made on the spec and how it levels. You will find in Cruel and especially in Merciless that the difficulty is ramped up quite a bit. You will need very good gear to progress as armor and elemental resistances will become crucial to your survival. Farming Ledge, Cemetery, City of Sarn, and Docks is where you will want to spend most of your time. You should outlevel the entire act and then just come back and clean up all the quests you need when you are OP. Thank you for watching, and do leave a comment with any improvements or suggestions you have. I hope this has helped at least some of you, and happy discharging.